is trash. <laughs> okay, I know my game is trash, but I'm not gonna rebuild it from scratch. For the past six months, I've created and updated my indie game Backrooms 2D, a game based on the internet creepypasta of the same name in 2D. And it turns out the game really isn't that good. So before all you guys come to my house and force me to add your suggestions, let's fix it. So my first order of business is to go through all the comments on YouTube and the game itself to find out what I need to rework. Okay, so I just spent two hours reviewing a butt-ton of comments and there is one really big problem with the game. But before I fix that, I want to try tackling some smaller problems first. With the first being... The game is too hard. Comments like... Level 3 hard! It's probably an indication that I should nerf some of the levels in the game. And I can thankfully do this easily by shortening the amount of time it takes for the exit elevator to spawn. Pretty cool. People were also complaining that remembering the notes to enter the code and level the end was too difficult. So I added this thing that tells you the data of all the notes you found in the game, so that the only thing you have to do is piece all the clues together. Now with that done, I need to focus on the one really big problem with the game. You're looking at it right now. The game is straight up just a black screen for some people, and most of the players experiencing this have resulted in one-star reviews, which isn't exactly that fun. Now, I have been stuck on this stupid bug for who knows how long. But this time, I have a trick up my sleeve. Did, did you like that editing thingy? Transition. This is Android's Device Simulator, a virtual device that can simulate Android apps on a specified device environment. And I'm thinking I can use this puppy to replicate this bug, since my phone doesn't have this problem. Alright, so I've just tinkered around with some settings and I have a phone on my computer! <laughs> Look how cool this looks, bro! And thanks to my virtual device, I managed to replicate the bug, which made me- It's over! It's freaking over, dude! Pretty happy. Ah. <sighs> Time to fix this once and for all. I first tried disabling my FOV shader which would allow players to see through walls. And I'm pretty sure this is the culprit since prior research led me to believe that custom shaders bug out certain phone- Nit, nit, no? Um, It's most likely the transition UI. There's this generating scene that plays on the start of each level. Maybe this animation somehow gets stuck causing the player's whole screen to be- That didn't fix it either. How about this? We're gonna create a completely empty seat and ensure everything is working correct. What is that? What is going on? So there's five days down the drain. Well, I really don't want to spend any more time on this. Oh. So instead, we're gonna deliver on the title of the video. Now I did clickbait you a little bit because in reality, we're just gonna rework our terrain generation system, which technically means reworking the majority of the game, but anyway, we first need to understand how the current terrain system works. We mishmash the position and rotation of both the tiles and connection points to determine how to spawn the next tile. But a problem with the system is that it's very lag. What we need to do instead is use ghost tiles or mere positions instead of game objects to speed up the system while also not overheating your phone. In addition, the code for our old system is extremely messy, especially when it comes to group tiles, which are these guys, making it impossible to add any new levels without spending another week fixing all the bugs that come with it. How am I gonna make like a 1000 line system if I can't even fix something as simple as a black screen bug, dude? I guess there's only one way to find out. First step, planning. I used Milanote to chart out what the old system looked like and connected cards with arrows to show what it'll turn into. <laughs> Look how disgusting this looks. What is going on? So after writing the formula of the quantum theory, I started with spawning my very first ghost tile. Keep in mind that what you're looking at is just a few numbers stored in some data. I just represent these numbers with circles and lines. And guess how long it took me to make this? E. Two days. T -t two days for some lines. This is why game development is so freaking hard. Next, to make our single tile less lonely, I moved on to spawning its first buddy. This is where my game plan is gonna come in clutch, since I actually know what to do, meaning this can't possibly take that long. 
I hate that! So, while Juju tries desperately to prove he's a somewhat competent game developer, I'm gonna run down what the heck I'm actually doing, since I also have zero clue. After creating our initial tile, we use a loop to infinitely generate more tiles, where we repeat these steps. Create a new tile, get a random connection point, get the tile based on that connection point, and position the new tile where one of its connection points matches with the position of the tile we got from choosing a random connection point. Hey Juju, you, you got that? I'm getting absolutely nowhere right now. He's definitely having fun. I'm not having fun. You know how demotivating it is to spend three days on this? Do you understand how hard game development is? It's two connecting tiles! <laughs> it's freaking two, dude! Okay, well, do you know what's cooler than two tiles? Infinite tiles. And since I'm a pro game developer, I did it on my first try. Okay, second try. Third time's the try. I just procedurally generated the freaking back rooms. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, game dev doesn't get much better than that. If it didn't break my computer. <laughs> Chunks are an essential part to any terrain system because of the ability to unload certain parts of the map, saving your phone from a potential meltdown. So whenever this tile added function is called, we use this guy to organize the tile based on its chunk and position, like a library of tiles. Then, we use the player's position and a little bit of math to determine the tile that should be loaded and unloaded. And Operation Don't Explode Phone is complete. Unloading, loading as many chunks as I want to, and BAM! We have the whole blueprint right there, dude! This is actually happening! Haha, <laughs> we're six minutes into the video and if your brain hasn't melted yet, congrats! You're about to see the first tile spawn. We check if there are no more connection points in the chunk, call this function by looping through all our ghost tiles, and... <laughs> Did you guys see that? I'm gonna play it again, bro. Things were going great. The next behemoth I need to tackle are group tiles, which are basically these structures you can find around the game. And to do this, I need a system to set the tile positions, wall positions, and connection points of each individual tile, ideally set up in a grid with custom buttons. This would require me to make a custom inspector, but I don't know how to do that. And if I can't do this, that means I can't make this essential part of the system, which means the last two weeks were for nothing. And uh, I don't want that. <laughs> Thinking about it further, I was genuinely out of ideas. No buttons equals no way to set any kind of data equals no group tiles. Was this the nail in the coffin? The obstacle I would have to fold on? Oh. Oh. Oh! Although I can't put buttons in a 2D grid like this, I can put text, which I can decode using this function to provide the necessary data for each tile then occurred was the hardest grind of this whole video. We've gone from one tile to 12 pink circles. It's more pink circles. I think we're making progress. 16 dots. I have three group tiles spawning. I have three. Look, I'm there. I'm so close, man. Once I can solve this orange thing going absolutely bananas, I think I have it. And all these dots. Dots have never looked so beautiful in my life. We got nine group tiles now. And it only took 30 hours. How close can you actually be without succeeding? This is impossible. How close can you be? 1,453. That's how many lines of code it took for the system to work! <laughs> Look at it! <laughs> Look at it, dude! <laughs> I actually did it. I freaking did it. <laughs> And that's how you watched an 8 minute video of me doing whatever this is. <laughs> oh, I spent 100 hours on this.
It is a little disappointing that after four weeks of game development, this is all I could make. A system that's not even ready to be used yet because of these reasons. I wish it was as easy as add a new level. That'll take me a day. Add a new entity. I can do that in a few hours. And I have so many things I want to add and that you guys want to see in the project, just I need time to do them. This is the most challenging project I've ever worked on, but seeing how much you guys care about it, even animating the entities for me, that's so cool. And with this system now finally finished, in the future, I can move on to something fun. Like this video. What the heck is a non-Euclidean game anyway?